Good morning, plant breeders, plant scientists, plant enthusiasts, and people that just working hard to improve food security throughout the world. Hey, this is David Benson, CEO and founder of Cornhusker Hybrids LLC in Lincoln, Nebraska, where we, our trademark and mantra is, success starts with the seed. No truer words have ever been spoken in this business. Everything starts with the seed. So today we're gonna to talk about genotype by environment interaction, that plant breeding nemesis that we're always chasing, trying to figure out the right environments to use to get the results that are the most believable, the most repeatable. But I wanna talk briefly just about where I left off last week with G by Y or genotype by year interactions. And just to reiterate that when we take a, a recently released cultivar, take it in, a, in an unknown, in another year that that year, that cultivar's performance in that year is totally unknown, unpredictable, and oftentimes exponentially different. So with that backdrop, within the G by Y is all of your G by E interactions that are embedded in this that you have accumulated over the time that you were developing these two cultivars. So I just want to introduce that any two hybrids interacting across more than one environment have basically two different types of interactions, change of magnitude and change of rank. And also remember, wonder can breeders, that without G by E, you could breed in one spot and grow all the hybrids everywhere in the world and put like 90% of us out of a job. Now we don't know that, you know that doesn't happen. In my crop, maize, the interaction is amazing and one of the real components that drives the business. So I'm just gonna talk briefly about those things. This is part one of a two part series. Next week, we're gonna get into how do we manage or manipulate G by E to create positive genetic gain. But briefly, I just want to follow up with the genetic gain equation quickly to show you that the change in the genetic gain is dependent on the selection differential, the additive genetic variance, and the parental control on the top, which can just be a factor other than one if you use half sib, full sib, or some other types of selection. It's not always one, in other words. Um, Beneath there in the denominator, your biggest things, of course, are the year effects, which we've talked about are huge, and your phenotypic, the square root, your phenotypic, the square root of your phenotypic variance or your phenotypic standard deviation, which is com composed of the error variance divided by the number of environments, the genotype by environment interaction divided by the number of environments and the genetic variance. And that goes to, it, it will lead you to believe that increasing environments by itself will decrease, improve genetic gain. And if every environment was created equal and everything was additive, that might be true, but we know that's not true. And obviously increasing environments is expensive and has diminishing returns. So quickly, that is that part of today's discussion. I just wanna talk about the rest of the time about the two types of interactions that, that, that exist between any two products, A and B or one and two, which are the change of magnitude, where there'll be some relative difference or spread between the two products across environments, but they don't cross each other or crisscross. This, and that is your, the kind of uh, genetic variance you'd like to see, I guess. And, and then if you actually, you know, had some good repeatability, some good heritability, you would have pretty good faith that those two products might behave that way most all the time once they get in the farmer's hands or the grower's hands. The one that gives you the biggest trouble, though, is the change of rank. The change of rank is there's a rank interaction where in certain environments, A is better than B or one is better than two which is just the inverse of, say, in some other environments. And this really throws a wrench in product development and product placement and product understanding of where this will happen and why and what effects it will have. So to today, that's really what I'm going to talk about. And remember that without G by E, most of you wouldn't have a job. And also remember that by 
the way the genetic gain equation is written and figured, it, it looks like, you know, just increasing environments alone would, you know, increase genetic gain. That's not necessarily true because it depends on what those environments are and what happens in those environments between those products. And then further remember, if you have a 40 or a 60 or 100 entry test, you have multiple hybrids interacting with multiple environments and multiple other products. So today I'm going to close with that. Next week, we're going to have part two of this where we're going to get into how I've managed it, how others have managed it, and how you can manage the genotype by environment interaction and even manipulate it to your favor in your product development program. So I'm going to close today. This is David Benson with Cornhusker Hybrids, where success starts with the seed. I want you to stay passionate.